Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Given major constraints on South Africa's transmission network, ESCOM is finalising new grid queuing rules. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the significance of this development. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. How are South Africa's grid constraints currently being experienced? Well, as you know, it was came to the fore massively when we had bid window 6 of the renewables program. And companies or projects that had bid, I think there were over 20 wind projects bid for capacity mostly in the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, Northern Cape. Not one of those projects for an allocation of uh, 3.2 gigawatts uh, went or progressed to preferred better status. And what had happened is that they were had, they had um, built or bid projects on the basis of uh, saying that they'd take certain grid capacity. But the reform to the market in the interim allowed others to also access and got their budget quotes for that grid connection. Uh, therefore, they were sort of sterilized or bumped out of the queue because uh, of the Eskom's approach, which was really they didn't really have clear queuing rules. So it was a massive disruption. It disrupted the, the REAP program. There was, I think, caused something of an existential crisis for the public procurement program. And uh, since then, there's been a process of rethinking, you know, how do we go about allocating uh, grid, scarce grid capacity. It's very scarce, as we know, especially in the three provinces that I mentioned. Um, and how do we do that in a fair way and in a way that gets megawatts onto the grid quickly? What has been the approach to grid access to date and how is this set to change? So I think the change is going to come under this, uh, what they call it, a, a grid allocation capacity or grid capacity allocation rules that they're going to announce. They haven't been announced yet, but they have been canvassed with stakeholders. So there's been a stakeholder engagement over the last few months and they've been, and basically it's, it's the transition from a first come first serve basis to a first ready, first serve. What that means in practice, we'll have to wait and see, and we'll need to see what ESCOM communicates in the next few weeks around how it's going to, to work. But basically, it's quite a cumbersome process to get grid access from ESCOM. Uh, you first get a cost estimate letter, and then once you've done certain uh, project advancement, you then approach it for a, a firm quote or a budget quote, which you then use uh, in your project preparation before you go ahead to actually build. So it's, it's a, been a very long process um, and generally it's taken many, many months and it didn't only affect bid window 6 but bid window 5 as well was massively delayed by uh, lack of ability f of Eskom's grid access units. You know, Eskom was a monopoly. They were the only game in town. Suddenly now there's a, there's a rush, uh, not only from people that are doing public procurement or REAP projects, but now because of the changes, because uh, there's now a huge pipeline of say t 10 gigawatts, over 100 projects that are coming for bilateral um, PPAs, which are sort of corporate B P PPAs mostly. And uh, that's come from the reform where the, you don't need, no longer need a license to proceed with a so-called embedded generation project, even if you're going to use the grid. So there's, a, there's suddenly a huge uh, surge of applications coming to Eskom. They initially weren't really capacitated to deal with the surge. They now have about 28 people in that grid access unit and they emphasize but most of the actual work on uh, giving uh, these budget quotes actually happens downstream in the in the regions but the grid access unit I suppose oversees that process so it's not that the 28 people aren't expected to process all the applications happening uh, on a regional basis in the Eskom offices. So, but still, it's, it is a logjam, it's a cumbersome process, and then on top of it, we've had this uncertainty around, you know, which projects should get a preference. And what we're seeing now is it's all about saying the projects that are most shovel ready, most ready to go, how they're going to assess that is going to be tri tricky, but there should be no hogging of the grid because, because the grid is such a, a precious resource now, you could actually go through this process of getting a budget quote and then use it as a sort of a, a, a gaming chip. So I think that uh, there's trying to ensure that that doesn't happen so that people that get access, get a budget quote, are actually going to build their project in the time frames that they've advertised. What else will be needed in the short and medium term to deal with this issue? 
On the short term, I think, uh, you know, as we go into more public procurement and also private uh, procurement, I think there is going to have to be a spatial dimension. So you're going to have to direct developers to where there is still grid capacity. We know in those three provinces, Western, Eastern, uh, Northern Cape, there are serious constraints. And also in the short term, to try and boost grid capacity using uh, techniques like adding battery storage to substations, which is what Eskims are doing at, across five substations currently through the uh, bidding process uh, that's underway um, through the IPP office, as well as Eskim's got its own battery energy storage program that can help, as well as, I suppose, changing the philosophy around curtailment. So allowing for a level of curtailment, which is basically allowing for some wastage of energy, which is unfortunate, but it happens all over the world when you've got variable renewable energy coming in. And maybe rather than saying that this grid connection point is at total capacity, when actually it's not, if you allow for some curtailment, so you actually release some grid capacity, I think that's going to be a short-term lever that they'll pull as well. But in the medium to longer term, it's all about building more physical assets more transmission lines, more substations, and I think that process is also underway. It's expensive, and but I think with the unbundling that's going to be happening of the grid unit, uh, grid business from Eskom, I think there'll be much more focused and priority attention given. We know that there's a, there's a plan in place through the transmission development plan which gets updated uh, yearly, and we know that Eskom is changing the way it's going to be procuring grid um, so that they can accelerate that, uh, relying much more on the contractor community to do a lot of the, the heavy lifting and the design. And I suppose ultimately there could also be an opportunity for public-private partnerships in the space to get these grid assets in place. Grid availability uh, is an issue in South Africa, a massive issue in South Africa, but it's also an issue globally. And I think we can probably try and learn lessons from what other countries are doing to unlock their grid using battery storage, using curtailment, but also using uh, maybe different models of, of adding new grid infrastructure. But maybe we will also become a template for others because this is going to be a big issue as the world transitions. Um, and there's a massive need to accelerate that transition. The grid is the key to unlocking that transition. And everywhere in the world there's been underinvestment in this, including South Africa. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.